Jean Moulin, avec ton terrible cortège, avec ceux qui sont morts dans les caves sans avoir parlé comme toi, et même ce qui est peut-être plus atroce en ayant parlé. Jean Moulin was one of the many French fighters who stood up against the Germans in occupied France. A true symbol of the resistance and the Republic, many streets, schools and universities have all been named after the French hero since his death 80 years ago. And he continues to be honoured across the political spectrum. Born in 1899 in Bizier in the south of France, Jean Moulin was the youngest child in a family of six. His mother was a devout Catholic, while his atheist father supported a secular state, campaigning for the left-wing radical party. He spent his childhood in this house in the city's centre. Jean Moulin wasn't a very studious pupil. He was naturally quite talented, but he didn't work hard. We actually still have all his school reports that show this. His father was deeply upset. He was a teacher at his son's school, so he expected his children to work hard. So instead, it was through conversations and debates held in this very room that his father passed on his views about solidarity and justice, values that were so dear to him. And these teachings he received would soon appear in his school work. When he was 16, he was asked to write an essay about his favourite hero. He chose to write about Vercingétorix because he united the Gauls to fight off the Romans. And look what Jean Moulin did later in his life. He united different movements within the resistance to fight off the Germans. His father's influence didn't end there as he pushed his son to enter politics when he was 20 years old. This despite Jean Moulin's passion for drawing. Sketches he'd made of his parents, his neighbours or his teachers have been given to the city of Bézier. From the age of 16, Jean Moulin had his drawings published in the satirical papers of the time. This is a copy of the Bayonet, for which he had a drawing published for the first time and earned a salary of 10 francs. That's decent pay for back then, around the same as what a laborer would earn. Throughout the Roaring Twenties, he drew caricatures depicting the high society and artists in Paris. All were signed under the pseudonym Romanin, which he adopted after becoming a civil servant. A lot of his work was about the upcoming Second World War, like this drawing that he named Caning School, Hitler the student versus Mussolini, the student who unfortunately went further than the teacher. Sports was also one of his other main interests. In 1937, while working for the aviation ministry, he welcomed leading pilot Maurice Bastier at the Paris Air Show. At just 38 years old, Jean Moulin became France's youngest police chief, moving to Chartres, southwest of Paris. When the war broke out in 1939, he asked to join others in fighting for their country, but was required to remain in his position within the police. When the French army retreated in June the following year, thousands of residents fled the violence and many sought refuge in the city of Chartres. 
As police chief, he had to ensure the day-to-day -day necessities, watch over the food, medical care, and manage the arrival of new residents because the population increased from 30 to 40-fold. Amid the panic, Jean Moulin stayed put, ready for the enemy's unavoidable arrival. On the 17th of June 1940, the Germans entered Chartres, demanding that he sign a protocol dishonouring the French army. At the end of the afternoon, the Germans brought him quite brutally to a hotel they'd requisitioned in Chartres. They wanted to get him to recognise that the Senegalese infantry had committed massacres in the nearby village of Laté. The Senegalese infantry, known as the Tirailleurs, were defending the region, and the Nazis accused them of killing civilians while Jean Moulin condemned Germany's bombings. He was locked up in this room with a dismembered body as they tried to get him to sign the papers. He wrote about this later in his account of the day, Premier Combat, First Fight. Je vois, en effet, à l'intérieur, une chose qui avait dû être un corps de femme. Une chose horrible. À moitié nu, avec une chemise que le sang a plaqué par endroits sur la chair. Est-ce le bombardement Ricane un de mes bourreaux qui a si bien tranché ses membres. Et me saisissant par les épaules, il me jette violemment sur le cadavre mutilé. Dans l'obscurité du réduit, avec cette odeur fade de cadavre qui me prend aux narines, j'ai comme un frisson de fièvre. Alors. In an act of bravery, Jean Moulin sliced his neck in the night to avoid signing the deal. The message to the Germans was clear, he would not collaborate with the enemy. They had him treated and allowed him to return to his office. On the same day, then Chief of State Marshal Pétain asked for an armistice with the Germans officially accepting defeat. But speaking from exile in London the following day, the General de Gaulle called on the French to keep fighting. J'invite tous les Français qui veulent rester libres à m'écouter et à me suivre. Five months later, Jean Moulin was dismissed by Pétain's Vichy government, which was collaborating with the Nazis. He travelled to London and met with Charles de Gaulle, who was in charge of coordinating with the British. De Gaulle tasked him with bringing together the many movements that made up the resistance and lead a unified organisation. Mission accepted, and he first met with rebels in Lyon, in France's unoccupied free zone. Going to Lyon was an obvious decision. There were no Nazi troops there, there was an influx of refugees looking to escape the occupied zone, and it is a transport hub. He had enough financing to come over to organize his delegation and fulfill the mission that General de Gaulle had given him. Lyon was an ideal city for the French resistance to operate, as narrow alleyways and buildings with several entrances allowed members to move around discreetly. Going by the name of Max or Rex, Jean Moulin organised meetings with the many cell leaders. Unity was a strenuous objective to achieve, as their political views ranged from nationalism to communism. But thanks to his strong listening and persuading skills, he managed to complete his mission and founded the National Council of the Resistance in Paris on the 27th of May, 1943. But the victory was short-lived. Less than a month later, on the 21st of June, he was arrested with other members in Caluire, just outside Lyon. They were taken to a military prison where the Gestapo detained members of the resistance and Jews. Welcome to the National Memorial of the Bonjour.
There, they were interrogated by local Gestapo leader Klaus Barbie, also known as the Butcher of Lyon. Klaus Barbie questioned and tortured first floor prisoners for two days. And one of them ended up telling him who Max was, the head of the French resistance. From that moment, Klaus Barbie went into a rage, torturing Jean Moulin relentlessly to get him to speak, to the point that he became semi-conscious in the courtyard. He was in such a state that he would never be able to speak properly again. Jean Moulin was sent to Paris for interrogation, but didn't utter a word. On the 8th of July 1943, he died alone in a train heading for Germany, taking his secrets with him. He was 44 years old. N'oublions jamais le sacrifice exemplaire de Jean Moulin et de ses frères et sœurs, agissant au péril de leur vie pour nous permettre de vivre en hommes et femmes libres. Le vrai combat. De Jean Moulin's true Parce fight was a fight against himself. He chose his destiny. Lui-même. He was a lively, hedonistic man. He gave his life for France. He's a hero of the resistance. He died as a martyr and embodies all of the compassionate values that we so desperately need today. Ami, du pays qu'on enchaîne.